Hello everyone, I'm bringing you another recommended reading video today. Obviously the purpose of these videos is to share with you resources and references which I've found useful in learning more about British military uniform, kit and military history, Commonwealth uniform and so forth as well. In this video we're talking about British uniform, the Victorian era, the middle to later Victorian era, specifically the tunics worn by the British Army which changed quite a bit throughout the period and we're actually looking at some magazines here and military modelling in the early 1980s, ran a series of articles, or included a series of articles, dealing with the various different patterns of tunic used by the British Army from the 1850s through to the early 1880s. And we're going to have a look at these articles. I've found them very useful, and I don't believe the information presented in these articles is presented anywhere as clearly as it is in these articles. So they are very useful from that point of view. So if this is an area of history, area of British military history which interests you, I can recommend picking up these old copies of military modelling. They provide quite a nugget of information regarding these different patterns of uniform. So we'll have a quick flick through these articles now. So here are the five issues of the magazine we're going to look at. They run from September 1982 through to January 1983. 75 pence. Now they cost a little bit more than that second hand these days, but they're nevertheless not particularly expensive and worth getting because as well as the articles I'm talking about, they're, they make good reading. There's some very interesting other tidbits in here. There's quite a lot dealing with the Falklands, of course, given the date of publication of these, and also an interesting article on Rock's Drift showing the fortifications and how they were constructed around the mission station at Rock's Drift. So there's a lot in here uh, that's worth reading as well. The articles I'm primarily interested in, the ones I'm going to show you now, are those dealing with British Army uniform of the middle to later Victorian era, as I say. The designs of tunics worn at the time. So we'll start with the September issue and then have a look at each of these individually. So looking at September 1982 first of all, we open this up here, you can see the page numbering actually runs through the volume, so if you put these all together in a binder, volume 12, the page numbers would run through from issue to issue for ease of reference. So the cut of the cloth is the article we're looking for here on page 687, so we'll find that in here, just flick past it there. So you can see here, this is dealing with the first pattern of tunic introduced to the British Army in 1855, the double-breasted design. Lovely illustrations, nice clear illustrations showing the rear detail and so forth as well. And this is the kind of information, the kind of detail you get in these articles. There's a host of information regarding rank and so forth in the text of the article as well. If we flick over to this page here, you actually have a pattern showing the construction of the tunic as well. So a lot of detail crammed into this article, much as it is very short but it gets right to the, the point of the design of this uniform and the various, uh, the insignia that was worn with it and the various details and so forth. So it covers this particular pattern of tunic in great detail. The next article we'll look at will cover the next tunic in the same amount of detail. We'll move on to have a look at that now. Moving on to October 1982, we open this up here. Again, we're looking for uh, the cut of the cloth, which is on 766. So again, the page numbering running through to this issue. So if we flick through here. 766. Again, lovely illustrations of the next pattern of tunic, which is of course the 1856. This is very similar to the uniform which guards wear today, of course. This design was carried forward with modifications. And you have, again, information in the text there regarding the various badges worn, insignia and so forth. And again, a pattern, the tunic down here as well. So again, very detailed. This again shows you the sort of quality of illustrations you can expect with these articles. Move on now to have a look at the next issue. Here we have November 1982, and you can see the Falklands influence on the front cover here. We open this up. Again, we're looking for cut of the cloth, which is at 884, as you can see here. So we'll flick through to 884, a little bit further. 886, gone a little bit too far. There we go. So we're moving on to the 1860s now. So we have the 1868 tunic. You can see here again the clear illustrations, details of pockets and so forth, Highland regiments. Again, plenty of information in the text here regarding the insignia and so forth, as well as the high quality illustrations. So you can see each article deals with the next pattern along, basically. We'll move on now to have a look at the next issue and the next article. We next have December 1982, and we have a suitably wintry illustration on the cover here of a Napoleonic era model, I think. Anyway, that's not the main purpose for looking at this. We're again looking for the cut of the cloth at 944 here. So 948 there, a little bit too far. There we go. So this is the 1870 tunic. You can see here again, nice color illustration, 
plenty of information provided in the article here. The pattern again, and we have a nice period photograph here as well in this instance. So just moving on to the next pattern of tunic here, again, giving you an example of the level of detail you can expect in these articles. Move on now to the last of the issues we're going to look at in this video, January 1983, again with the Falklands influence on the cover illustration here, as you can see. And we've moved on to a new volume now, again, as you can see. We have the Cut of the Cloth here, interesting the Rorke's Drift article following on just after that, but we want page 28 for Cut of the Cloth. I've gone a bit too far there, just flick back a bit, 22, 26, 27. 28. And there it is again with the nice colour illustration there. 1873 to 1881, tunic. Again, plenty of details there regarding the wearing of insignia, rank and so forth. You can see here a full body illustration in black and white with the 1871 equipment and so forth. Illustration of a typical infantryman of the time. And again, plenty of information in the text here regarding the wearing of insignia and so forth. So these articles as a whole, with these five issues together, provide an excellent picture of the uniform of the British Army from the 1850s through to this period, the early 1880s. And if you're interested in that period of British military history, I can highly recommend picking up copies of these because they do provide a good amount of detail on the tunics which were worn at the time. And those, a lot of those details carry across to the frocks that were worn as well for uh, undress and other duties uh, where you would not be wearing the tunic. So that's quite useful from that point of view. And as I say, uh, these articles are uh, very detailed and I don't believe the information they provide is provided in such detail elsewhere. I've not found other uh, sources which cover this scope of development of the tunic in as much detail as these articles do. So I hope you found it interesting looking at this. Obviously it does sit somewhat outside the era I normally cover on the channel, but it's nevertheless an, an era which is of great interest to me, the middle to later Victorian era. And it may be an area I'll expand into in the future, possibly, generally speaking, with reproduction uniforms and accoutrements and so forth. But, it, say, it is an area of interest, even if it's not one I cover on the channel a great deal. So, hopefully, it's been interesting looking at these articles. And if you're interested in the British Army of the Victorian era, I can recommend these articles as a very useful reference regarding the British Army's uniform of the time. As I say, if you have found this video interesting and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below. That will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And a massive thank you as always to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It really is greatly appreciated as I always say. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is of course an email address down there as well. That's everything for this video, so until next time, bye for now.